it is a great pleasure and a pain. I felt I was doing my first day of the Leaving Cert all day uh, to have this task this evening. But it's a very happy task because not only are we celebrating this book, I think we can take it that we are also celebrating the life and the very long life, thank God, of Barry Casson. to where our lives come joined, <laughs> in a very innocent way, of course. <laughs> but uh, just to start, it, the book kind of goes into uh, its sections. And the first section, of course, interested me for all sorts of reasons. First of all, it kind of puts an onus on all of us to try and write down how we were reared. Because it's lost then, and it is wonderful to read this, and it is so, so, such a great story of a young boy growing up, the latest in the family, a last of a, a, a sort of a, a late child, which interested me very much because I am also one, and not only am I one, but in Dancing at Lunasa, four of the Monday girls were all nine years later than the top one in the family, which says something strange, like they call it the shakings of the bag in the country, or sometimes they call it a fairy child, or sometimes they call it a spoiled brat, <laughs> or indeed um, <laughs> a mistake. <laughs> to be in America, the child of exhausted loins. <laughs> but one way or another, Barry and myself were both the children of exhausted loins. I thought that um, in all that first section I loved, and it did make me feel, even though I can't write a word, that I would try and write down for my children. And I think we all should try, no matter how bad we are. I'm looking at Paige, whatever it is, at this handsome brute here. <laughs> and uh, my God, he's gorgeous. <laughs> Pity he grew up. Um, and then on the other side here, we have, of course, the greatest, luckiest day of Barry's life, which was marrying Nancy McCullum. Uh, it was undoubtedly funny. We call it in this in the trade a mixed marriage when somebody of us marries one of them. <laughs> and the song came to my mind: Oh, the farmer and the actor should be friends. <laughs> but I do think that Barry's luckiest day of his life was meeting this woman and having this absolutely wonderful, wonderful family. And she did love the theatre, which of course was the secret of how they. Sort of, and even if she didn't like the show, she was one of those wonderful people who could drum up some insincerity. <laughs> Which really, I beg you all, don't ever say, I thought it was very good, but you know the bit. I won't say it. You leave that behind. But Nancy was such a wonderful person, and we had such hospitality out in Salmon, and she was just divine. Now, so if you look at some of the plays that were done in the hard, hard times, it really would raise your eyebrows because no Arts Council grants, no nothing like that. Moon for the Misbegotten, Under Milkwood, Death of a Salesman, The Actors, Anna Manahan, Ray McAnally, Ronnie Masterson, who fortunately is here tonight with us, and of course Phyllis, Phyllis Ryan as producer and actor. Milo O'Shea, by the way, had the same birthday as myself last Friday, and he was on the phone, and he sends his very best wishes, because he is, was at school with you, as they say, with Ria Rooney. Indeed. Right? Indeed. Yeah. I'm going to be brief now. Um, I first met Barry in the late 50s. The 50s, we're all told it was a time of drab life and cheerless streets and no fun. My memory of it was, <laughs> If you had a bike and the price of a cup of coffee, the world was your lobster. <laughs> you could do anything. And in one of those drab, I think it was an October night maybe, Mary, I know it was drab and raining anyway, on my bike, I went over to visit yourself and Nora Lever who were planning a review. And I sat down and I played the piano and sang, I can't say no, and you didn't say no. <laughs> and for that, that was my very first job. And for that, like for many other things, I'm extremely grateful. Um, I have to refer to, to one of the family who is just uh, always remembered. We were doing a, a review called Black Rosie about 1971, when Anne would not have been 10, I think. Am I right, Anne? Right there. <laughs> <laughs> and this little girl came in with Barry because maybe Nancy was having a baby or something. And this little girl was sitting in the auditorium, this exquisite face and blonde hair and quiet, gentle, 
beautiful, dignified child. She didn't look for sweets, she didn't shout out, she didn't run along the corridors. She just sat there absorbing everything, which was probably rubbish, that was going on on stage. And I always thought afterwards, when I see her on television, that quality she has of kind of no ego, just sort of listening to what people have to say and presenting the information to them has made her such a consummate. I'm very happy to have seen that as a baby. In her. Thank you, Anne, because I know you've had so much to do. cannot be overlooked at this point because Barry, I think, I think we would probably agree, had such a huge role in the presentation of his plays, not only as director and actor in them, but probably one would feel as dramaturg as well, because we all know the piece of paper that comes to you. Um, the late David Kelly, Miriam is here, and Laurie, his wife, are here, um, and very welcome. But the late, late David Kelly used to have this wonderful thing. They don't expect me to say that, do they? <laughs> and an awful lot of us, when we open a script, have that very feeling. God, oh, you don't expect me to say that. <laughs> but Sive, Big Maggie, highest house in the mountain, and here we come to Ray McAnally, who undoubtedly very describes very, very cleverly, which is true, as the bad cop and the good cop, cop and a magnificent actor. Uh, and, you know, in, in the field, uh, Barry directed him, and he directed Barry, no doubt, as well, because he was, uh, all actors should do that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but Ray McAnally, I remember him telling me one of the sweetest stories I'd ever heard about the theatre, and that was in Bancrana, Anu McMaster, who's referred to a great deal in the book as travelling theatre, uh, a magnificent work in all around the country, uh, a pair of Donegal men coming out of Hamlet. And one said to the other, God, that was very good. <laughs> oh, Lord, saves. and did you think that was good? Oh, I said, I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. There was only one thing, he said, I'd say they had it worked out beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> I just come to the very end of this now. And I, I don't know whether I said the beginning bit of my horror when I reached page 90, having done all my homework like for my leaving certificate. And I read, the fuss of celebration embarrasses me. Well, we're not, we're not the director today. <laughs> And we can embarrass you all you like. And he said in the last paragraph then, um, no doubt had stardom come along, I would have accepted with open arms the risk of drink, drugs, and unprotected sex. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Here's